Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, we'll explore the Japanese knife known as a Tonto. So, I recently forged a number of knives, all of which would fall into the general category of the Japanese knife known as a Tonto, uh, but they're all very different starting with this big beast right here and working my way down through some smaller knives like this one right here. Um, so uh, what I realized is, you know, they're really quite different knives and it sort of got me thinking about, you know, just kind of the general category of the Tonto. What is it? What kinds of knives fall into this general category? So I thought I'd share some thoughts about that today. First, definitions. A Tonto is a Japanese style knife, but specifically one that would be used in a self-defense type application. It's a very old uh, style that goes way back uh, to the beginnings of the Japanese uh, sword making tradition. So I'll kind of show off a couple of knives that I made recently and talk about some of the diverse kinds of defensive knives that you can find in the Japanese tradition. Now, there's a notion among, you know, some people who are kind of just scratching the surface of the Japanese sword world that there's a traditional Japanese, whatever, XYZ knife or blade or sword or whatever, and it looks exactly this way, it's this long, it's this wide, uh, whatever, and outside that there's just nothing else. Well, there certainly are some very consistent um, traditional forms in Japanese sword making, but Within that little box that you would call a Japanese style of sword, there's actually quite a lot of diversity. Now a quick note for you guys who aren't that familiar with Japanese blades. These are all unmounted blades. In other words, it's just the blade itself. There's no handle, there's no scabbard. Typically the mounting of blades in Japan was left to specialist craftsmen with only the forging and basic shaping done by the smith. So that's all we're showing here. Now, when we think of Japanese blades, we tend to think about heavily curved blades, like this. And if there's a typical, uh, you know, standard Japanese geometrical form, this is it right here. Roughly 25 centimeters, or about 10 inches in blade length, single edge, curved blade. Unmistakably made in the Japanese tradition. But here's another blade that I made recently, uh, much shorter and no curvature at all. In Japanese terminology, curvature is referred to as sori. So this would be referred to as muzori or no curvature. Six or seven hundred years ago, this style or even slightly negative curvature on the spine would have been typical of most tantos. They wouldn't have typically been like a drop point hunter. It's not that exaggerated a negative curvature, but just just barely below straight. So these would have been stabbing weapons, light, concealable, something you could hide in a sleeve or in your belt, something that you're probably not going to show off to the world. Now in later years it became customary for samurai to carry two swords, one a long blade and one short. They weren't concealed but they were just shoved through the belt and they were out in plain view. Typically at the door of a home or in many public places, you'd sort of check your long blade as a courtesy to the people you were visiting, but you'd keep your shorter blade on your person. So having a somewhat longer slashing blade as a secondary blade rather than the older, slimmer blade might have made some samurai feel a little more prepared in worst case scenarios. I don't know that we can reconstruct perfectly what the thinking of samurai two or three or four hundred years ago was, but this seems logical to me. This blade, which runs 13 inches or about 33 centimeters, would fall into that category. Uh, could be called a wakazashi or short sword, or it could be called a tanto. Um, you know, it's just sort of on that borderline. Conventionally, anything under one shaku, which is roughly 11 and a half inches, around 32, 33 centimeters, is considered to be a tanto, and conventionally anything between one and two shaku, which that's an old, you know, archaic Japanese uh, measuring term, that's considered to be a wakazashi. But realistically, you know, sort of on that borderline, it could be called an otanto, it could be called uh, a short wakazashi, ko-wakazashi. Um, hey, look, 
It's a long knife or a short sword. Now, these three blades don't by any means cover the entire field. Tontos were made in all manner of different shapes and geometries. Some of them had cutting edges on the interior side of the curve. Some of them had double bevels, more like katanas. There were double-edged blades, which resembled yari or spear blades, as well as blades made by the famous swordsmith Masamune, which resembled a hocho or kitchen knife. Anyway, bottom line, the world of Japanese defensive knives is full of diversity. Educating yourself about Japanese blades can seem like a daunting task, but it really doesn't need to be. If you're interested in expanding your knowledge base of Japanese blades, check out a video where I discuss a wide variety of sources of information about Japanese sword collecting, history, usage, and how they're made. Click the info button on your screen for more. So if you're interested in purchasing uh, one of these knives uh, that I've showed you here or something similar, check out my website, Walter Sorrell's Blades, where you can find uh, all of my work. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, here are a couple of other videos that you might be interested in. Also, like me on Facebook at Walter Sorrells Blades and check out my website, waltersorrellsblades.com, where you'll find examples of my work along with instructional videos showing all aspects of Japanese sword making, including forging and polishing, how to make hamones, and how to make fittings, scabbards, and handles for Japanese swords.